Okay, welcome to the second session of today. And uh, we start this session with an invited talk. Uh, Pierre-Louis Curien from uh, uh, Université de Paris uh, will speak about uh, a syntactic approach to uh, opetops, opetopic sets, and opetopic categories. Okay. So, Pierre-Louis, uh, thank you. So thank you, thanks to the organizers for inviting me. And so this talk is uh, uh, mostly about opetops and even about positive opetops. So there will be in fact little syntax, little opetopic sets and little opetopic categories, but uh, much stuff on opetops themselves. So I want to introduce, uh, because this audience is uh, in homotopy type theory. So I want to introduce uh, those objects uh, as um, uh, in the spirit of uh, uh, weakening uh, uh, equalities. Okay, so the, uh, <coughs> everyone knows in this audience that the associahedra uh, gives the geometry of uh, uh, associativity. So I want to show you opetops as uh, the geometry of associativity, but of unbiased associ associativity. And we are going to see what it means with pictures. So look at this uh, first uh, picture, which features a uh, three opetop. Okay, this whole thing is a three opetop. Now, uh, each of these uh, triangles here is a two opetop and this uh, uh, trapezium is is also a two opetop so let's let's look at the uh, at the at the trape at the trapezium here uh, it uh, features the unbiased composition of three one cells uh, that are uh, <clears throat> following each other f g and h so they are composed in one shot that's that's the idea of this picture and uh, the composition is uh, written down here as a one cell and the two cell, so the, 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 the space in between, is a witness of that composition. And then you, you, can, you can look at the left of the picture in the same way. This is the composition, this triangle is the composition of G and H, and this one is the composition of S and G composed with H. And then finally, the three cell here, uh, you have to represent this uh, thing of uh, this really at a, at a three dimensional picture. This is the front and this is the back. Uh, and uh, the space in between is filled by us. And us fe features the associativity, but it's, it's an unbiased version of associativity. So instead of writing the usual associativity like this, we write that F composed with G composed with H is the same thing as the unbiased composition of F, G, and H. Okay, so in this picture, we have seen uh, shapes of uh, dimension zero, which are not given names here, but they are all here. Uh, one opetops like F, G, H, uh, G composed with H, uh, two opetops, and three, and a three opetop as I, as I discussed. Okay, so now let's move to four opetops. So four opetops are going to show us the coherence of these unbiased associativities. So let's look at this picture. This picture features three, three opetops. One, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three. This one features um, this uh, partially, th this parenthesized expression of GHK. Okay. Uh, this one features this, uh, <coughs> Uh, this uh, parenthesization and this parenthesization of F, G, H, K. So let us read, uh, for example, this one, okay? Why is it exactly this parenthesization? Because I first compose H with K, okay? This gives me this triangle, then compose with G, and then compose with F. Here, what I did is I first composed G, H, K in one shot, and then composed with F. And here, while it's only about G, H, and K, I composed H and K, and then G with uh, the composition. And what you see is that this 
parentization, uh, parentization fits into this uh, unbiased um, composition of GHK. Okay, so we have a tree here of, uh, so, so we, we, we have a four cell. This four cell has only one, one output, uh, one output and two inputs organized in a tree, in a tree manner, because this, this guy is grafted on this, uh, this guy is grafted on this guy. So uh, in more traditional categorical terms, what we have here is a coherence between three um, unbiased associativities. So in, categorical, in, in a categorical language, we would write exactly this commutative diagram. And uh, here you see that this as here corresponds to this uh, uh, three cell here. This as here corresponds to this one and this as here corresponds to this one. Okay, so how does this uh, fit with the associahedron? Well, everybody I think in this audience has seen at least once the, uh, the pentagon of uh, MacLean, which is about binary composition. So here we have the pentagon for the composition of four consecutive arrows. And uh, what we add in between are these unbiased things. So what we have done here is a little part of the triangulation of this whole pentagon, exactly this one. And there would be a four open top uh, witnessing all the triangles, all the other triangles that you can uh, fill in here. So you would have, uh, I don't know how many triangles, you can count uh, yourself, but you can sort of uh, barycent barycentrically um, put points inside uh, the pentagon, depending on how much parentheses you have put uh, on uh, your uh, uh, sequence FGHK. Okay, so that's the flavor of opetops. And uh, so far I spoke only about composition, but now I want also to, sp to speak a little bit about identities. So how do you picture identities uh, with opetops? So he's, uh, here, uh, here's a picture. So here I want to feature the identity uh, over object X. Uh, it's going to be witnessed by, uh, the identity is going to be a one cell from X to X, okay, like this. And the witness of identity is going to, be, uh, is going to be a two cell called Yota. So there is a witness for identity, just like uh, there was a witness for the composition uh, of two cells because unbiased composition starts also with zero. So if you compose zero arrows, then you have the identity. Okay, so you have this. And then what does this picture feature? It features the uh, unit law on the left because what you can read here from this picture is that alpha here, is a witness for the composition of F followed by the identity, okay? Uh, and uh, this is id composed with F, okay? And the, uh, <clears throat> the target, it, it, it happens that the target of uh, this picture, what you see behind uh, is, uh, uh, is only uh, F, okay? So uh, really unit left is a witness uh, of uh, uh, the three cell unit left, which is represented by this diagram, shows uh, is a witness of uh, the identity law it composed with F is equal to F, okay? So what I have done here is not all of what we will do in an opetopic category. So it's very similar to the discussion of monoidal categories where, uh, or bicategories, where we have some canonical morphisms, the associativities and, uh, and, and so on, but you have many more morphisms. So what I have shown you here are only canonical morphisms, but, but we want to have morphisms uh, having these shapes which are not necessarily canonical. And that's what opetopic categories would be about if I was going to speak more about them. But this was only for motivating the shapes that I gave uh, you this, uh, uh, this um, preamble. Okay, so now what's the plan of the talk? The plan of the talk is to recall one of the uh, most uh, popular and important approaches to opetops, 
that is uh, due to uh, Coq, Joyal, Batanin, and Mascari, who reformulated the original ideas of Bayes Dolan uh, in terms of polynomial monads. And actually, this was the starting point of my joint work with uh, Cédric Otan and uh, Samuel Mimram, where we worked on a syntactic presentation of uh, opetops uh, making this definition explicit. So what I will do here in this talk is to give a variation of this syntactic work that happens to be not so syntactic, but very explicit nevertheless. And finally, in the th final part of the talk, I, I will, uh, I will uh, move to positive opetops, uh, which are opetops without degeneracies. And I will present them in a different style uh, which I learned from Amar Hadzi Hasanovic, who happened to be, uh, happens to be a postdoc in our, uh, in our group uh, this year. And I will show you why this other presentation in terms of graded oriented posets uh, is, is, uh, is handy and interesting. Okay. So let's move to the polynomial uh, functor part. Um, polynomial functors, are um, a way to encode uh, simply a certain notion of operand, a colored operand. So uh, you have a set B here, which you have to think as a set of operations. Each operation has uh, several inputs, uh, which is governed by this map here. So the uh, inverse image, if B is in, is the small B is in capital B, uh, the inverse image of uh, uh, small b is a finite set, so we, we want finite fibers, and it, it, it features the set of inputs of this operation, while, uh, um, uh, while this operation has only one output. So maybe, maybe we should move directly here. So this, uh, the, this uh, um, uh, polynomial font of features operations that have a number of inputs and just one output. So they are many to one, just like the pictures that, we, uh, that I showed you before. They always had only one target and, and, and several, uh, and several uh, sources. Okay, and each of the target and the sources has a color. Okay, so that's what uh, the set uh, I is about. Okay, so uh, in general, you have colors for inputs and colors for output in the general theory, but we are interested in polynomial endofunctors, so we ask for i to be equal to j. And then there is a national no uh, notion of morphism between polynomial functors, which are uh, uh, given by arrows like this, f1 and f2, uh, such that this makes a pullback, and the fact that it makes a pullback here means that actually uh, the uh, F2 maps operation of a certain arity to operations of the same arity, at least the same cardinal of arity. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the spirit of uh, the, the presentation I give today is that I will always manage to have F1 here to be the identity. So F1 is a kind of bookkeeping. F1 tells you, well, here you have an operation in B which has its input name like this, I don't know, A, B, C, and in B prime you have operations, but their, uh, their inputs are named one, two, three, okay? But A is one, B is two, and C is three. So we don't want this. We don't want to have this explicit uh, bijection. We want to be clever enough so that F1 will be always transparent. And this is in contrast with one of the approaches I developed uh, in my joint work with uh, Otan and uh, Mimram, where we had a more De Bruyne style of notation, uh, where this bookkeeping uh, actually uh, became uh, quite involved. Uh, but for implementation purpose, it, it can be important and interesting. Okay, so that's what polynomial functors are about. Now, what is a polynomial monad? In, in a polynomial monad, you ask, moreover, that your operations are given a notion of composition. And composition here is given if you have one operation and another operation, if you plug uh, this other operation on one of the inputs of B, this should give you a new operations. And the inputs of this operation will be the set of inputs of B minus X, union the inputs of B prime, disjoint union the uh, inputs of B prime. And of course, you ask for associativity law. 
Okay, so polynomial monads, I said, uh, as I said, is our, uh, um, uh, uh, it's a version of uh, operads. So for people who uh, care about operads, they correspond to something called sigma-free operads. So it's, it's, it's not quite uh, non-symmetric operad. It's not that. It's the action of the symmetric group is free. Okay, it's a bit, it's a bit subtle. It's, it looks like non-symmetric, but actually there is an action and it's free. And uh, it's non-skeletal uh, in the sense that the inputs are named rather than numbered. It's described in the partial style, uh, which is also called, also called the circle I style. So instead of uh, the classical presentations of operas is by simultaneously, uh, simultaneous composition. So here you would compose B simultaneously on all its inputs with other operations. That would be the classical definition. And finally, it's colored because, uh, well, there, there, are, there are colors on the, on the inputs. And you all, uh, yes, what I forgot to say, of course, is you plug operations with matching colors. So the output here should be colored, the output here, sorry, should be colored like the, uh, this input. Okay. So, okay, and uh, the reason why it's not quite like non-symmetric operads is precisely because of these maps F1 above. The, the, the map between uh, polynomial, polynomial functors can give uh, wiring instructions that are not the ones that you use conventionally in non-symmetric operands. That's, that's the reason if you want to care. And this, and, and, and this notion of polynomial monad is exactly also the one uh, given in, in a series of paper by Hermida, Mackay, and Power. Okay, so now let's move on. Uh, once we have a notion of polynomial uh, monad, we are interested in free, uh, building the free polynomial monad over a polynomial end of functor. And this is the, um, this is the uh, monad of trees. So trees, well, we, we will see, we will see trees in, 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 in a minute. So uh, trees, you, you can imagine it's trees of operations uh, uh, like, like, like this one, but, but then you put other operations on top of B prime, et cetera. So you build trees. And uh, the important thing is that uh, in this new polynomial functor called P star, uh, the operations are the trees. The arity of a tree, uh, that means its set of inputs uh, in, 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 as, as an operation, a tree has as inputs its leaves. And the target of a tree is uh, uh, the target of its root. Okay, and how do we compose, because it's a monad, how do we compose trees by grafting? So if I have this black tree here on the left, and I want to compose it on this input. So I, I told you the inputs of the trees are its leaves. So if I want to plug on uh, this leaf of the black tree, this red tree, then I just graft the tree in the literal sense and I get this other tree. So this is uh, the uh, polynomial monad uh, called P star. And uh, because it is free, in case I started, so of course, this, this, this can be done for any polynomial functor, but if moreover P is a polynomial monad, then uh, because P star is a free polynomial monad, uh, I, can, uh, ha I have a map from P star to P in case P is a monad, and this one is given by initiality. But uh, let's be more concrete. How do you get this map? It's just the interpretation. So you have a tree of operations, but P is a monad. So these operations compose. So you can gradually, you have a tree, uh, like, like, like in, in this slide, uh, okay? And you can gradually compose. For example, you compose these two red things first, then you get uh, an operation, then you can compose here, and pro progressively you contract your tree until you have composed everything, okay? So that's uh, this, import, uh, the, this uh, uh, notion of uh, composition of the tree uh, will be important in the next slide because there is now another way to look at trees and to make out of trees another polynomial monad than the P star monad. So there is another uh, monad construction called the plus construction 
so the, I, I don't know if the, the plus construction, is, I think it's given in, in the paper called Royal Button, in the, this name is given there. I think it's called slice construction in base dollar. So how does it go? It goes like this. Now a tree is not looked with the same eyes. You look at a tree like this black tree, you don't look, it, look at it as having as its arity its set of leaves, but its set of nodes. So when you compose a tree with another tree, what you have is to choose, what you have to do is to choose one node of your tree, for example, this one, and the composition then means that you are going actually to zoom over this node and to insert the whole tree in place of this node. So this is called substitution. Uh, I also like it to, to call it zoom substitution, okay? And uh, the, uh, the compatibility condition is that when you compose this tree, before, before you can plug this tree inside, you have to check something. You have to check that its target, the target of this tree, which is uh, the composition of all its nodes has exactly the same arity as the node in which you substitute here. Okay, so this is the plus multiplication. So what you see here is something uh, interesting because uh, what you have done is you started from a polynomial functor on some set of colors, I, and you built why, by, by the plus construction, you built another polynomial, sorry, it started from polynomial monad, you started uh, and, and you build another polynomial monad which, whose set of colors is not I anymore, but the operations of the previous monad. Because uh, the, 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 the colors now are the nodes of, uh, the, the, of, of, of those trees. So, um, okay. So let's see what it means uh, in terms of uh, iterating this construction. So suppose you, you started with some functor, some polynomial monad. So uh, I, I will, I will uh, tell about the, the basis of the induction uh, last. Suppose that we have built some polynomial monad O n minus one. And then uh, uh, this, uh, uh, you, you, you apply the plus construction to it. So it means that the operations of this monad becomes the colors of this monad. So you build a whole tower of uh, operations and each operation at each level is a tree of operations of the previous level by, by the plus construction. The plus construction always takes trees of things. Okay, so how do we start? We start with the identity polynomial monad on a singleton set, okay? So this identity polynomial monad features already the zero opetops and the one opetops. The zero opetop, there is only one zero opetop, that is the point, the shape of the point. There is only one opetop, the shape of just one arrow, one cell. And if we now look at two opetops, they are trees made of one opetops. But how do, can you make trees of one opetops uh, just by building a chain of one cells? This is why uh, here, well, if we go back to these early pictures, yes, this early picture, you see that the two opetops is always made of a line or chain of one opetops because you, you have no possibility to branch because every one opetop has only one input. But as soon as we move to four opetops, then you can really start to build real trees. Okay, so that's how this definition works. And uh, let's uh, uh, now uh, summarize uh, how opetops are going to look like before we move to a concrete description. So the concrete description will start over again. So if, if, if my description was too sketchy, don't worry because the, 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 the second part will uh, uh, start from scratch again. Uh, so the summary of this very brief introduction to, um, to polynomial monads says that an n opetop is an oriented n-dimensional volume 
whose boundary is divided into a pasting scheme of source n minus one opetops and a single having a single target n minus one opetop. It happens that the target is determined by the spacing schemes of sources. So the target somehow can be omitted or reconstructed. So n opetops actually can be identified with pasting schemes of n minus one opetops. This is an important part of uh, the combinatorics of these things. And uh, okay, so uh, n minus one opetops are described by trees whose nodes are decorated by n minus one opetops and whose edges are decorated by n minus two opetops. Okay, so now with this in mind, uh, let's uh, formalize this uh, without using the language of uh, uh, monads. Okay, so I need a language for trees. And uh, here is a language for trees. So for me, a tree is given by a set of nodes. For each node, I will give you an arity, which is a set a finite set, uh, which uh, names all the inputs of uh, 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 each node. And I will also have a local relation saying that uh, this node Y is grafted on this input U of this node X. Okay, so I will have triples of the form X covered through U by y, or y covers x through u. And I have a notation for that. So let me repeat that now with notation. A rooted tree is uh, uh, given by the following data. It's a non-empty set of nodes uh, containing a distinguished element, the root node. For each node has a, a, an arity, uh, a set uh, of inputs, and then uh, the, the tree uh, structure is uh, uh, encoded by these local triples, x, u, y, where x and y are nodes of t. Okay, so I have this notation for the nodes of t, t bullet, sorry, this one. And uh, u is one of the inputs of x. Okay, so it's a tree, it's a rooted tree. So there, is, there should be only one path from the root to any node of the tree. And finally, I, um, I require that the names I use for the edges do not repeat when the edges are open. So in, in these trees, you have uh, two notions of edges. You have internal edges and you have leaves. So what I, ins I insist that leaves are named all differently, but uh, I, I, I tolerate that internal edges could be repeated. Names of internal edges could be repeated. Okay, so maybe I will uh, skip the details here. I will just uh, um, say that there's a notation here that might be useful in the sequel. So just like bullet was used to name the nodes of the tree, uh, the set of nodes of the tree, I use this uh, symbol here for the leaves of the tree for, for an obvious uh, reason, because this is, this is uh, the symbol for an open edge. Okay, so uh, now what is an opetop? So an opetop is either a zero opetop, and there is just one, and it's, uh, 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 I use this uh, funny notation for, for it, black lozenge. And what is a, a positive opetop? Okay, so here I have a very careful definition. So I, I will speak of a representative of, of a positive opetop. So we are just like in lambda calculus, there are terms and then there is a notion of alpha conversion. So here I'm very careful and I call them representatives because I choose, I make a, a lot of choices and of course these choices are not very relevant. So I first, to give a positive opetop of dimension n, I first declare a non-empty set omega bullet of nodes. For each of the nodes, I assign a n minus one opetop decorating it, okay? And I use the notation s x omega for it, the source of omega at x, or the x source of omega. 
So you see that recursively, S x omega contains lots of information because it's an n minus one operator. Moreover, what I want is that these nodes form a tree. So I have a tree structure on the nodes of omega, and I have a constraint on this uh, tree structure. Each time I plug uh, y, a node y on a node x, I must uh, uh, make sure that the target of the opetop associated with y coincides with the u source of uh, the, uh, the opetop uh, um, decorating the input u of uh, uh, the uh, opetop decorating uh, the node x. Okay. So let, 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 let's, let's be not too formal. So we have two opetops here uh, sitting at x and y. And in order for them to communicate, the target of y should uh, coincide with uh, the, the, source, uh, the, 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 the source of x at u. Okay. Uh, and what is the target? Because th there's no target in this definition. So it's a derived notion and we, 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 we come next. Uh, we, we, we come to it next. So uh, I just want to, to, to show that this definition hides some uh, subtleties because uh, I, I both insist on some disjointness assumptions. So when I define trees, I, I asked for, for leaves to be all named differently. So there was some disjointness, but sometimes I also want names to coincide because I want a target to be equal to a source. So it's, it's quite subtle in terms of uh, uh, tro uh, uh, choice of names. Okay, and here I will skip the details, but I, here I have a description, an explicit description of what I mean uh, to, uh, for two uh, representatives of positive opetops to be the same. So uh, it's essentially through a bijection uh, that recursively calls for other bijections. So I, I, will, I will skip this because I, I'm already noticing that uh, times is, time is flying. So, um, okay, so here's an example of three opetop. Uh, and I just, well, this is the kind of picture that we have seen at the beginning. Now I have displayed it as a tree here, rather than uh, just a pasting diagram. And e even each of these nodes is itself a tree. So this guy is a tree of one, two, three uh, nodes on top of each other. So here you have the totally explicit description of a tree of trees here. And then how do you compute the target? Okay, so here's an example of four pit top. I will not comment because it's very similar to the pictures I showed at the beginning. So let me comment on the target now. So how do you compute the target of this guy? So the target of this guy uh, geometrically is just its border. Okay, so you will have this one. And so the target of this three operator is this two operator. But in terms of trees, what it means is that actually you composed, so this tree, be, because of the monad structure, you can compose the operations in any order. So you can compose this, for example, this, this node with this one, okay, by substituting the three blue dots inside the red dot, and you get here. And then you compose again, you get here. Or you can compose these two first, uh, which uh, uh, leads you there, and then you can compose uh, with this one and get there. Okay, so that's one way to look at the composition. Uh, okay, so now we know what the target is. It's the, 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 the target computation is, 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 is using these uh, notions of substitution. So now let's uh, look, now that we know that uh, opetops have targets, they also uh, obey some laws. And these are the opetopic laws that will govern the category of opetops. So here we have three laws, one uh, governing uh, internal edges. An internal edge in an opetop um, uh, can be seen as a source of the red thing here or the target of the blue thing here. And it should be the same. So that's what this uh, equation says. Here, what we have is that a node of the target here is a leaf of uh, is a leaf of the of the uh, pasting scheme here, and uh, this is essentially what uh, this equation says here. 
So uh, uh, a node is always the source of some node of uh, the pasting scheme. And this is a globular globularity assumption. And the other globularity assumption is that the target of the target is the target of the root of the tree. Okay. So uh, because we mentioned um, um, did uh, we mention identities at the beginning? So let me mention very briefly how we deal with uh, uh, degeneracies because so far what I introduced are positive epitopes. So I didn't discuss trees uh, with uh, uh, no nodes. My formalism is a tree with nodes. So in top of that, we also have the notion of degenerate epitope. Uh, which if you have an n minus two up at top, like, like a point like here, x, okay, you can build uh, an n up at top, so you jump two dimensions by uh, uh, Seems that the microphone is muted now. Uh, can we? Okay, I, I unmuted it. Ah, okay. okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so 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 I don't know how much you missed. Uh, so this picture. Five seconds, features, I think. <laughs> okay, this uh, picture features a, a two op top. No, sorry, a three op top, uh, having as sources at least uh, well, exactly two degenerate op tops. Okay, and if we briefly look at how we compute the target of this guy. So the target of this guy, I didn't draw it in, 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 in this manner, but it's, it's going to be just this triangle here. Uh, this one, F, K, and, uh, and, and nothing in between because it's a two up at top. So in terms of trees, I decompose this three up at top as this tree, okay? And now if we look at them as trees of trees, you see that the degenerate up at top is a very strange kind of tree without node. It's just a single leaf. And when you substitute this single leaf, you, um, you, th this, uh, this node vanishes. And this node can only vanish if it uh, has arity one, okay? There, 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 there's a, um, there, there is, of course, some compatibility condition uh, in order to substitute. But you see that once you substitute, H and G go away, and what you get is F, K, and this is exactly what I wanted as, as a target. Okay, so from now on, uh, we are going to forget about, um, we are going to forget about uh, um, degenerate opetops. So since time is uh, flying, I think I should admit I have a very nice abstract machine for computing targets. And I uh, will not have the time to present it, so I will just skip it. This is very unfortunate, but I will skip it. <laughs> and let's move on. I, I will try at the end, if I have five mi uh, two minutes, to, to, to come back to it. So this was my explicit description of, um, of uh, opetops. So now in the third part of the talk, I want to reflect uh, and this is, this is uh, really my uh, recent uh, work uh, and uh, very much influenced by discussions with Amar, Hadzi Hasanovic. Uh, it happens that uh, we can organize opetops uh, in quite differently in, in two categories. Either we have a category the, uh, of opetops whose morphisms are face morphisms, and this I would call it the historical one, and in this category, the notion of degeneracy, uh, identities, etc., they arise from the object of the category, just as we ha as I have to shown to you. The degenerate opetops give me identities in some sense. And there is another way to look at degeneracies where you limit yourself to yourself to positive opetops as objects, but you extend your set of morphisms. In, you add to face to the morphisms that are inclusions of faces. You also add a notion of collapsing morphisms. Okay, and uh, so in this category, you have less objects and more morphisms. So I want to suggest you in the next slide 
um, how, how, how this works. So first, first of all, the, category, the, the first category uh, is, is really in line with the classical works on Orpetops. So Bezdolan, Leinster, Cox, Royal, Batanin, Mascari, and uh, it's presented by generators and, and relations. The generators are the sources and target, and uh, the equations, we have seen them already. They are the, the inner equations, the globular equations, and there is an equation for degeneracies, okay? So uh, th there is a simple definition of this category. It's okay. But uh, why is the other category interesting? The other category is interesting because it's more in line. So I, 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 rem I, I, I recall the other category considers less objects, only positive opetops, but more morphisms. And this is more in line with other approaches, approaches like, like globes or simplicial, uh, or the simplicial category, where you have, uh, in globes, you have, uh, you have the, 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 the degeneracies are in the, in, in, in the category of shapes. No, uh, they, uh, uh, sorry, come from the morphisms in, in the category of globes. You have, uh, you have source of digit and identity uh, going the other way. Then uh, another interesting fact is that this category, provided it's the same as, as the one considered by Marek Zawadowski, because he has a, a yet a, a quite different formalis, so we, we, we should check that we are really speaking of the same objects, but provided this is true, uh, he has um, connected this category with uh, uh, with uh, the, um, the literature on test category. So it, he has a, a test category structure and hence a model category structure using the works of Cizinski. So this category is, is better uh, connected with uh, uh, literature on model categories. So uh, I, I would say it's worth to investigate. And uh, this is new to me because I uh, pre uh, previously mostly worked with the previous one. But what happens is that this category uh, is not, um, it, it, it cannot be studied uh, um, with uh, the description of opetops that I gave. We really need another description, which is through posets and uh, due to Hadzi Hasanovich. So now you have to tell me how many minutes I have to, 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 to test, to, to um, um, say a few words about this. I cannot hear you. Uh, Marco, you're, you're muted. Yes. Seven to 12 minutes. 12 if we have no questions. Yes. No, okay. Okay. So I, th I think I will, I will uh, try to, to give an idea in five minutes. Okay. So l let me use one minute uh, to, to say uh, one more thing because, uh, because I have to tell you in, in this new category, uh, OP plus, okay. How do you uh, introduce identities? Because I, I showed identities in, 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 in the classical framework. Now, how do you do this? Well, for example, uh, what do I mean by degeneracy morphisms in this category? So for example, you have this OP top here, which you can send in the category OP plus, you have a morphism from this OP top to the zero OP top. So you have dimension decreasing morphisms. Um, uh, in, in, in this category, where you collapse completely uh, a one cell into a zero cell. Now, in the pre-sheaf category, it means that you can start from a point, and in the pre-sheaf category, you get by the pre-sheaf structure, not by, uh, not by the mechanics of filling, like uh, when you compose, you fill horns and things like that. Here, it's just provided by the pre-sheaf structure. From X, uh, you can get uh, back uh, the identity by applying the pre-sheaf uh, functor to, uh, to, uh, to this x, okay? And uh, uh, same thing if you want to have the uh, unit low, you start, is, you have also collapse uh, from this two opetop to this two opetop. So this is a non-decreasing collapse where you just collapsed this one cell in this opetop to get this one. So these, these two points here get uh, the same. And again, the pre-sheaf will, from the identity on F, which we already introduced, uh, um, will give me, by the action of the pre-sheaf, will give me the unit 
uh, left um, uh, witness that f composed is composed with f is f. Okay, so let me move on and um, uh, show you briefly uh, the setting of Hadzi Hasanovich. So the, the setting of Hadzi Hasanovich is really the same uh, uh, spirit as uh, in abstract polytops. So uh, uh, opetops are polytops and we want to look at them at, as a partial order of their faces. And the important property of the partial order is that it is graded. So every element has a dimension. It's oriented in the sense that uh, when, uh, so it, it, these are oriented polytops. So there's a notion of input face and output face. And this is recorded by um, an orientation in the Hasse diagram of the post set. And then there's this magical property called oriented thinness, which I want to discuss here. So uh, this, this is a, a key property introduced by Amar. It says that every interval in the post set that has length two, so x is of dimension n and y of dimension n plus two, has this shape. So there are only two people in between of dimension, intermediate dimension. And moreover, the sign in the orientation are governed by this slope. Okay, so now what I want to show is that, so I will do this only by picture because I, I have only time for pictures right now. So I want to show you how from an example of an opetop presented in the way uh, coming from uh, Koch, etc., cetera, uh, how I can reach an opetop in the sense of, um, of uh, Amar, okay? So let me start from a three opetop like this, okay? So remember, there is there is there there, is, uh, there are two cells. Uh, the two cells are alpha and beta, and the one cells are here. And F K is the source of alpha, etc. So you see, from here, I get this order: alpha has sources F and K, beta has sources G and H, and uh, uh, F has source X, K source Z, and G source Y. Let's just check that K has source Z. Yes, K, K here has source Z, okay? So we have everybody here, good. Now, next thing that we do in order to get a post set in the sense of Amar, we add targets because targets were deduced in my approach, but they are present uh, geometrically, they are there. So I add them formally. So here is some mumble that I cannot comment, but I can do it really on the picture. So on the picture, let's uh, put the targets explicitly. So the uh, three opetop itself, I call it omega. The target, I call it T dot omega. And then there's the target of the target of omega, which is here. And then the, there's the target of the target of the target of omega, which is here. And in my order, I'm going to add these targets. One, the, all these targets are going to be added, and I begin to, to give in your orientations in my uh, post set because before I only had a negative because these were always inputs. Okay, so everything here that has not a little plus means it's a minus. So everything was minus, but now I begin to add pluses because this guy is the target, so I have a plus here. This guy is the target, etc. Okay, so, so far, this is not yet a post set where you see these little oriented thinness diagrams. But now comes the magic. The magic is that the laws that I have shown to you that hold for opetops, the globular laws and the inner laws, in inner uh, law, they all correspond to little lozenges that have the shape of oriented thinness. So in, when uh, I add to my, guided by the properties of my opetop, I will add progressively all these information about target, in, uh, target compatibility and uh, globularity to my partial order. And so uh, the uh, inner uh, law uh, will uh, force me to add these uh, edges to the Hasse diagrams. Then the globular law will uh, let me add other 
edges to the Hassel diagram. And finally, the other globular law will force me to add other things. And then you can check that this diagram is, has this, uh, the, the, the oriented thinness property. So uh, what is interesting, and I will uh, skip uh, any detail, what is interesting is uh, uh, that uh, um, we, we, th th there's a theorem here. The theorem is not only that I can associate a post set to an opitop, but I can characterize those post sets that come from opitops. And uh, okay, so here is uh, here's an axiomatization, which is quite di a bit different from the one proposed by Amar. And uh, the um, interesting fact is how do you prove such a theorem? So um, given, given an opitop, you get a post set. And from the post set, you reconstruct an opitop. That's easy. Because from the opitop to the post set, you, you added information. Okay, and then well, it's it's always easy to get to, to remove information that you added. But the tricky point is you start from a post set, you get an opetop by forgetting information because in the opetop, as uh, shown you before, the target information is not there, and so you have first to forget it and then to reconstruct it. And it happens that the proof that uh, you uh, uh, can reconstruct exactly uniquely the post set you started from is exactly the same thing as proving that the machine, the abstract machine that computes the target that I could not show you is correct. So there is a very nice uh, connection between an operational device that computes a target, which I had not time to show you, the proof of correctness of this machine amounts to prove that Amar's presentation, my presentation coincides. So I, I find it nice when, when an abstract machine is connected to a, a correction result in mathematics. And here's a picture that uh, proves uh, that uh, the, this is a bijection, but I have no time to comment on it. So I would stop here by seeing what I would like to do next. So uh, we would like, well, I, uh, I think we will, uh, Amar and I uh, want to work on it. So um, we want to give a presentation of this category of positive opetops by generators and relations. And then uh, we want to work on the type theoretical definition of higher categories based on either of these categories of opetops. We are agnostic at this, uh, at this point, uh, which one fe uh, will feel better. And uh, for this, uh, a good candidate are Finster's axiom, Eric Finster's, but there is a fix to be done. His axioms are not quite correct and he, he knows about it. <laughs> and uh, uh, he even told us what the, what the bug is. And uh, okay, and then we would like, of course, to compare with other approaches and I have uh, really uh, have to stop. Okay. Uh, let's thank for this beautiful talk, uh, Pierre-Louis. Uh, yeah. And we don't have a lot of time for questions, but uh, if there are some short questions. Uh, well, can I ask a question now? Yes, yeah, of course. So I thought that you were defining this uh, a partial order of faces in opetop to define some morphism between opetops. Uh, did you define them? Because if you define them, I, I missed it. So no, no, I did not. No, no, I, 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 <laughs> I didn't define them in, in, in the slides. So yes, of course, this presentation of opetop via partial orders is meant to give a, a handy definition of morphism, which is due to Amar. And these are essentially uh, morphism of graded uh, post sets that uh, respect uh, that respect boundaries of, of in, in any dimension. Okay. And how yeah. this compares with, uh, you know, because there is an obvious another notion of a morphism between opetops because you can treat them as omega categories. In fact, many to one computers, and then to consider uh, morphies which are just 
uh, omega functors between them, strict omega functors, right? Uh, this, this, so the, ans the answer is I don't know, and I would hope that they would match. But uh, the, this definitely needs to be on, on the stack of things to, to do. Because this is how I define yes, it, this I con I, yes, contract, I contraction, mm. right? Yeah, okay, okay. It looks similar, but I, I'm not sure whether they're the same or not. Okay, but anyway, anyway, that's, you, you are Marek, obviously. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> then, yeah, yeah, it's obviously on, on the stack. The, the first thing to do is, uh, is how, how uh, we, we, we should be, I, I even mentioned you as, as our, as, a, as a, some handle, uh, so, you know, when you, when you, when you want to hold vertically in a, in a shaky, so you, you are one, one of the places where, where we should uh, uh, have a grip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there other questions? Actually, I had a small curiosity about the, the brain encoding. Is that for uh, connecting the internal edges, for uh, giving a notation for the internal edges? So, um, okay. So the, 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 the brain-like ID is, uh, is uh, I don't know, I lost, did you, you still see me? Okay because I lost something, but uh, yes, so the, 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 it's, it's based on the notion of address. Uh, and the idea is that in, instead of giving names and then, and then uh, bijectively say that uh, representatives are the same, we have, we have a uniform and unique notation based on the notion of address. And the, 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 the first set, the, the addresses are recursively words of words of words of words, just like, like uh, opetops are trees of trees of trees. And we start from the empty alphabet, okay? From there, we get uh, an alphabet with just one word, of course, yeah. the empty word. And then we have, uh, we iterate uh, the, uh, al uh, the, the alphabet is, the next alphabet is the words of the previous alphabet. And these are the names that we use to uh, give uh, uh, unambiguous addresses to the nodes and the leaves of opetops in all dimensions. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is elegant, but uh, quite unmanageable and unreasonable. <laughs> For humans. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't see uh, other questions now. So I think we just wait a couple of minutes before starting the next talk. And uh, let's thank again for uh, this nice talk. Thank you. Thank you.